Scott for Scots here. You ever want to grow new grass faster? Kind of like when you press the two times playback button on your podcast so you can speed through episodes. Except it's Scott's turf builder, Rapid Grass. You're speeding your way from a thin and damaged lawn to a thicker, stronger one in just weeks. Bit too fast, maybe slow it down, okay? Let's just go back to normal speed. Get a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Rapid Grass today. It grows grass two times faster than seed alone when applied at the new lawn rate subject to proper care. Feed your lawn. Feed it. A Royal Caribbean vacation is all the vacations in one vacation. It's a hike that volcano, zip that zip line, surf that flow rider, cabana chilling, island hopping, sushi for lunch, lobster for dinner, ice cream all day vacation. A perfect day at Coco Cay Private Island in the Bahamas with a water slide skyscraper and hot air balloon vacation. And it's all on one Royal Caribbean vacation. Visit RoyalCaribbean.com and come see the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Great to be on board once again today. The Minnesota Vikings head into Detroit and put up 42 points and wind up with a 42-30 to victory in Ford Field. Minnesota Vikings offense came to life, and it's been alive the past few weeks, but it came to life even more so today. Dalvin Cook, a complete offensive juggernaut of a game today for the Minnesota Vikings as they advance further and further into the season with a better and better record. Now 5-2 and two on the mark. Kirk Cousins, 337 yards, four touchdowns. Overall outstanding game today. Another one of those what-the-hell-is-he-doing moments. Another one of those games where he didn't have one of those. Not one of them. Uh, Matthew Stafford ended up throwing a pick late in the game, so that brought his quarterback rating down a bit. It was kind of a can-you-top-this type of a game between the two quarterbacks, but the Vikings a little more balanced attack, of course. Delvin Cook, almost impossible to bring down, 142 yards, two touchdowns. Just time and time again, it looked like he's going to go down. He breaks loose, including the very late touchdown that put the game on ice. Just a beautiful back-and-forth game. For the longest time, at least in the first half, you thought, I don't know if we're going to win this game. Detroit will probably wind up winning. It'll be kind of like a seesaw battle, and Detroit will wind up be the team on top. But that just wasn't the case. Down the stretch, the Vikings just kind of hung on. Uh, Ola B.C. Johnson got his first career touchdown today. Very cool. Adam Thielen's got a pulled hamstring, apparently, on his early touchdown. 25 yards, the only reception he would get in the game. Unfortunately for him, C.J. Ham also down the stretch helped put the Vikings in the lead and wipe things out there. Put the Vikings in great position to get the victory. Five-yard reception at the end of the day. Kyle Rudolph also. Just the ball spread around very nicely. Stefan Diggs, though, ultimately the top receiver like he was in the past in Detroit way back in good old 2015 in his rookie year when he came on the scene and it was like, can you dig it? It's a new sensation. That's what they were playing on the Paul Allen show. Uh, Irv Smith was a bit of a new sensation, but both tight ends combined for 10 receptions today. Pretty awesome stuff. 100 and, uh, <laughs> 118 yards total receiving for those two guys. And again, the touchdown to Kyle Rudolph. Both of them were targeted six times with five overall receptions. Kirk Cousins is a completely different quarterback right now. Uh, he's throwing the ball away when he needs to. He's hitting his targets. He's protecting the football. He's sensing pressure. Nothing's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But generally speaking, Kirk Cousins absolutely is absolutely fantastic right now. And the Minnesota Vikings look like a division contender, if not a conference slash Super Bowl contender at this stage. Uh, Vikings burned a bit on defense. Yes, Xavier Rhodes got burned a bit again. There was the play, the touchdown, blah, 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 but several other plays down the stretch where he got beat. He's just getting beat. Uh, regardless if his coverage is good or not, he's getting beat. And that's the frustration once again today. As in other games, uh, the, t- the late touchdown that put Detroit back in it. Kirk, uh, excuse me, Dalvin Cook. What am I talking about? Xavier Rhodes. Really just kind of following the receiver, not the ball. Would have been nice if he turned around. Might have been able to bat it away, but that just wasn't the case. And the throw right on the money from Matthew Stafford. 
that's just kind of like a what the hell can you do type of situations, I suppose. Both quarterbacks uh, completing four touchdowns in the game. Again, both of them over 300 yards. I suspected as much that both quarterbacks would go over 300 yards. The old bend but don't break defense. Kind of in both cases. The Vikings have been a bit more bend but don't break than they have in the past, but are still, well, they're putting up better offensive numbers. Uh, earlier in the season, looked like an absolute mess, particularly against Chicago. Down the stretch and against Green Bay, extremely frustrating. The Vikings would have scored a ton of points against Green Bay if not for the awful play of Kirk Cousins, but he is a completely different guy. I mean, you're not seeing the inconsistent, out of control, all over the place guy who can put up numbers, but then will screw you in the end. You're seeing a guy who's clutch, and it just gets the job done down the stretch. C.J. Ham, of course, that receiving touchdown that put the Vikings ahead, really for the, uh, that was the first part of the game when you really started getting the feeling, we just might win this sucker in the third quarter there. That was a wonderful feeling. That was a pretty clutch play, pretty ti- pretty well-timed play, and a well-coached game by the Minnesota Vikings offensive coaches, and generally speaking, uh, Mike Zimmer and such. Nobody's perfect, but an overall outstanding game. Uh, very heartbreaking situation where uh, Stephon Diggs' numbers would have been much more spectacular if he didn't catch him, <laughs> if he was able to ring in a ball that went right through his hands in the end zone. And then Dan Bailey misses the field goal attempt. That was pretty devastating. But generally speaking... Well, that was pretty much the low point of the game when you thought, we're in trouble, we're going to lose, or maybe we're going to lose, or we're just going to not, it's just not going to be our day, possibly. Detroit's going to get all the close calls at the end, but generally speaking, the Vikings got some calls today, too. So, we can't complain a whole lot. We really can't complain about the refs today. Six uh, extra points, all made by Dan Bailey, all touchdowns. The Vikings didn't have to punt until much later in the game, which is extremely impressive as well. Britton Cole quit. 49 yard average, 54 long, just consistent and just very solid. No touchbacks, nothing in the 20s either, unfortunately, but that was just the way it was. Uh, good kicks by, Brit- by Britton Colquitt as, uh, once again. Sam Martin, very solid as well for the Detroit Lions. Everson Griffin was snake bit a bit today with a couple of holding calls, unfortunately, are roughing the passer at the end of the day. It was a holding offense and roughing the passer situation. That ended up uh, putting the Vikings. Well, it ended up, luckily the Vikings didn't get punished. It was an offset call. Thank God for that. That could have been worse. But Elverson Griffin also able to add a sack today, along with Daniel Hunter, who always adds sacks. He just always does. Uh, Eric Kendrick is very solid throughout the game today. I would just say, again, the secondary is a bit of our weakness. Uh, Mike Hughes got beat, but generally speaking, he was very solid in the game. He was very solid. Overall, Xavier Rose got beat a bit uh, during the game. But it wasn't his worst game ever either. Trey Waynes would get uh, an interception in the game with no return. That would kind of put things away. That's a good feeling for sure. But an overall offensive juggernaut of a game. I mean, the defense was good when we needed them to be. A couple of sacks again on Matthew Stafford. When that helped kill drives by the Detroit Lions. Detroit was getting a lot of first downs, though. They were getting some of the plays they needed to stay in this game pretty much all the way to the end. So the Vikings' defense isn't generally the reason that the Minnesota Vikings won today. It's definitely the offense. Kirk Cousins, again, hitting the passes. Dalvin Cook being basically untackleable down the stretch. And there's just some overall really good play calling. And you just leave the game feeling a hell of a lot better. You feel a hell of a lot better. You thought this was going to be one of those frustrating losses, maybe 30-27, to 30-24. to 24. Detroit ends up winning the game. Detroit scored 30 points today. So, I mean, obviously their offense is is, uh, you know, laser-focused. It's been very, very solid all season. And again, they've been snake bit with some calls here and there. And, of course, losing uh, Adam Thielen with a hamstring, there's a good chance he will not play against the Washington Redskins, but hopefully we'll be just fine with the tight ends, mixing the tight ends in. Delvin Cook, maybe with a screen pass here and there, he ended up with seven yards receiving. Ola B.C. Johnson clearly is the part. Nice draft by Rick Spielman. Seventh-round pick by Ola B.C. Johnson, or with Ola B.C. Johnson, and he caught... Well, four out of eight, per se, but some of them were throwaways or just weren't happening, per se. Well defended, generally speaking. Kyle Rudolph, though, overall, solid performance. He's had some good games against Detroit in the past. Good feeling. Uh, Amir Abdullah returned to Detroit today. Ended up averaging almost 30 yards of return with a 38 long. Pretty good. Pretty good, solid kick return type of day for Amir Abdullah. Didn't break loose, but again, 38 yards is pretty damn good at the end of the day. And Agnew also with a 29-yard return down the stretch. So, 
Not bad. Not bad. We go home feeling pretty good here. And then uh, you host the Washington Redskins on Thursday. So we'll see how that goes. One of those Thursday night games, but the good part is, yeah, it is what it is. I'll end up recording the show on Sunday anyway, even though it's a Thursday game. We'll see how the numbers do. Very good chance the Vikings wind up 6-2, and two, and that's an average of 12-4 and four if you're able to go 6-2 and two again in the second half. Uh, good chance that uh, our good friend, by the name of Patrick Mahomes, will not be available in the next game. So, again, that also helps the Vikings' chances down the stretch to continue to have a better record. Dallas isn't as good as we thought. They aren't who we thought they were. They are who we thought they were. Whatever it is, it is what it is. Uh, The play-action play down the stretch when Detroit was still very much in the game. I mean, they they get the big stop. It's a five-point game because they filled in the two-point conversion. But if they're able to get the big stop, then, oh boy, you know, Detroit could still get it done. I mean, Matthew Stafford can get a can convert a third down in its sleep, whether he's running or whether he's passing. It, you know, it's one thing or another, and he's given the Vikings a hard time. He's given us fits, Viking fans fits, on those third and longs for decades, pretty much now. But that play action to uh, the play action play that ended up being a 66 yard gain to Stefan Diggs was an absolutely spectacular play. Great play call, great completion, great job getting open by Stefan Diggs. Everything, all the above, but a great accurate throw by Kirk Cousins just left you feeling amazing Stefan Diggs almost was able to break loose into the end zone but didn't quite make it huge play Vikings end up scoring at the end of the day Delvin Cook end up uh, getting in to put the game on ice again it looked like he was tackled he went to the right and then was literally getting stopped ended up turning to the left and went all the way in I mean that's Delvin Cook in a nutshell what an absolutely spectacular game from him today almost six yards a gain and Awesome. I mean, awesome. There were a lot of banged up players on both sides of the ball, but generally speaking, more I'd say on the Detroit side. And again, you know, hopefully Adam Thielen's okay. I mean, hamstrings can be a headache, but I guess he'll be okay long term. I mean, that's the hope coming from the Washington game, as he'll probably not play in that one. We'll see. Alexander Madison unable to really break loose at all today. Doesn't have really that breakaway speed, but he does have the ability to break tackles. And of course, the high IQ to hit the the holes in the right place in the right time. Detroit running game was stifled for the most part during the game today. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, Carry on Johnson did not have a spectacular game, though his average was good. It just seemed like um, Detroit, obviously, focusing more on the Vikings' run defense being better than their pass defense right now. And obviously, the quarterback's better than Carry on Johnson. He's a more dangerous weapon. Um, Huge, gigantic day for Marvin Jones Jr. He was targeted a billion times. He got four touchdowns. That's quite a phenomenon. And again, the Xavier Rose was on him most of the time. That's the frustrating part. Uh, Danny Amendola had a very big game today as well. But uh, four touchdowns. Four touchdowns. How many times is he a wide receiver with four touchdowns in one game? Maybe Julio Jones, not Marvin Jones. Again, the former uh, Cincinnati Bengal, who was capable of being a pretty good, uh, pretty pretty big-time receiver at times when he wasn't, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. When he, when he was the main focus. Generally, was the number two receiver in Cincinnati. Uh, C.J. Hawkinson never really had any huge moments. Only a 14-yard gain, really, to lead the way there. Very quiet game for some of these guys. And, again, that's the Vikings defense getting the job done when it mattered. But uh, Detroit definitely focusing on the wideouts and beating the cornerbacks from Minnesota, which have been a little bit of a weakness. But our offense is good enough now, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose it is. And Detroit's got a bend-but-don't-break defense. But it definitely broke today, giving up 42 points uh, down the stretch. So, absolutely huge. Makes you feel great. You go home feeling like a million dollars. It's almost like, what else can you say? You just feel so happy, so comfortable. You don't want to complain about anything other than Xavier Rose did not have the best game. Uh, And you just come out feeling all peachy keen. You come out feeling good. Kirk Cousins' accuracy and his capability, you just hope that he can continue this during the course of the season, because if this is the Kirk Cousins that we're going to have for the rest of this contract, you might end up retiring number eight rather than begging him to leave, basically. Like, you just can't wait. Like, okay, yes, thank God his contract is over. And that's a, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I, I, I know this sounds strange, but once in a while, wonderful things happen. Once in a while, they do. Uh, you got New Orleans and Chicago in the background. Teddy Bridgewater, who had some moments against the Bears, but not always, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. Uh, you're just left feeling more and more comfortable with uh, how things went during today's game. 
right now, I mean, the fan base's confidence in this offense is growing, and of course, the confidence in this offense in general is growing. I mean, the, the confidence of the players, it whatever the heck was going on before seems to have disappeared, and that's a wonderful feeling. Let's just not ask questions. Let's just be happy that uh, they figured it out. I, that, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting right now. Whatever it was, they figured it out. Obviously, the talent's there. The special skills that Kirk Cousins have are that of a good quarterback. I mean, a good throwing arm. You figure out eliminating weaknesses, exploiting other teams' weaknesses. You just work smarter, not harder. Play smarter, not harder. That type of thing. If, I mean, they're playing hard, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying they're not making it as hard on themselves. Like Chicago, you know, the defense basically knew our, they mimicked our every move. They knew exactly where we were going to go. And you wound up coming out of the game feeling like crap. They were like, we can't complete a first down. We can't do anything. We can't even run. We can't throw. The offensive line sucks. Kirk Cousins sucks. And the wide receivers are pissed off. And, you know, before you know it, Stefan Diggs is going to be asking to go back to Maryland or like Baltimore, that type of thing. He's going to ask to be traded to the Baltimore Ravens. Adam Thielen, well, he's from here, but maybe he'll want to go to Detroit or Green Bay or something. And then Dalvin Cook, I, okay, let's, let's stop. <laughs> let's stop with the negativity other than, uh, yeah, I mean, it's too bad we lost those two games. It sure is. It's too bad their things were so out of sync. It's too bad that uh, this happened, that happened, this guy was banged up, that guy was banged up. It certainly helps that Rashad Hill has been a better left tackle than Riley Reef. I think that helps as well. I mean, he's more stable. He's not this great player, but he's stable. I mean, the object is to protect the quarterback if you're the left tackle, and Rashad Hill is protecting the quarterback. He's not this perfect superstar left tackle. He's not Joe Johnson, you know? He's not Nate Soldier in his Nate Soldier in his prime, but he's doing a hell of a job, I think. He's doing a pretty good job, and Brian O'Neill's becoming one of the better right tackles out there. I mean, you don't get sacks or hurries or any of that crap for Brian Hill. He's a hell of a... I just called him Brian Hill. Brian O'Neill. Lord. <laughs> but no, he's he's been a hell of a right uh, right tackle for Minnesota. Um, it It is what it is. Klein's been out. You've had Dozier in there. He's, he's had his moments. He's had some bad moments. He's had some good moments. Uh, and Garrett Bradbury's kind of starting to he's starting to fit in those big shoes of being a starting center in the National Football League. First couple games, he was getting roughed up. He was getting shoved around. He's getting beat up like a little pinball. Hey, he's getting better and better. Uh, Bradbury's getting better. He's getting more comfortable out there. And yeah, to be fair, he went up against some of the best players in the NFL when it came to the defensive side. So, of course, Bradbury would struggle in that situation. But uh, yeah, pass protection, run blocking, running schemes, schemes that, well, they don't exploit your gosh darn weaknesses. I mean, why would you try to force something that is a weakness? You know, why not, you know, use your strengths and at the same time exploit other teams' weaknesses? And that's why the Minnesota Vikings have been a different team the past few weeks. It's been a big deal. Um, you've had the big moments as well. You know, obviously things were good against the Oakland Raiders. They were awful. Then they got much better. Heck, they gave the Bears hell. And they're giving the Packers a tough time as well. It's not the easiest game ever. We'll see how that turns out. We'll talk about that in segment number two. But you're seeing a different football team. You're seeing a team that's playing smarter, not harder, even though they're still playing hard. Yes, you know, you try to get the draft. I don't want to sound like Randy Moss. I play when I want to play, that type of attitude. But uh, that kind of is what it is. Well, Oakland gave Green Bay a hard time for a little while. And then, yeah. And then, yeah, things went a little bit more positive in the Green Bay direction, unfortunately. (laughs) Interesting scores all over the place. A lot of them actually kind of predictable, including the LA Rams giving up 30, excuse me, the Atlanta Falcons giving up 37 points to the LA Rams. Yeah, at home, by the way. Ouch. Well, I'm just kind of jumping all over the place. Can't wait for segment two, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you you come out of this feeling damn good. Five and two, you're probably going to beat Washington. In fact, you freaking better be watching. That'd be horrible. Uh, six and two record very likely and you go from there and all right all right I keep thinking almost like there's a bye week but there isn't it's just the halfway point the bye week isn't until like the 24th of November so got a ways to go hopefully the Vikings will be very much in playoff contention by that stage and uh, we'll be feeling really good heading into the Christmas season and la 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 jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way the Minnesota Vikings are going all the way hey okay hopefully uh Green Bay's looking like they're going all the way too, so we got to take care of business against them first in U.S. Bank Stadium and uh, thump them into the ground at some point. That would be the hope. Uh, at least even things up and 
maybe win a tiebreaker somehow, some way, or just flat out pass them. They gotta, they gotta fall at some point. Green Bay is not perfect. They gotta fall at some point. But we got a competent quarterback now, who's obviously had the special skills all along. We knew that. We saw it last year. We saw nice numbers, but then he would have these weird mental gaffes. And well, hallelujah, those mental gaffes are not around lately. And that's like three games in a row now. So. Fran Tarkington Award, well, it's going to go to this. It's going to go to two similar guys here. Delvin Cook absolutely deserves to have a Fran Tarkington Award. He's going to share it with Kirk Cousins this week. Kirk Cousins is going to have his second consecutive Fran Tarkington Award. And again, Delvin Cook's going to share it. Stefan Diggs, he didn't tip up a pass for an interception, but he should have brought in that one touchdown. Ended up, ended up being a seven-point like hole for Minnesota rather than seven points or six points because I don't think Dan Bailey's going to miss the extra point. <clears throat> But uh, there's your award there. And back-to-back weeks for the Christian Pond Memorial. I have to give it to Xavier Rhodes. I don't hate the guy. And it's not like he's the worst ever. It's not like his coverage was that bad the whole game. And, and on that touchdown, it's just, unfortunately, he got beat at moments. And sometimes it's, sometimes the Vikings secondary almost looks like they're playing prevent defense. That's what gets annoying. And also, it's just a good offense by Detroit. And well executed, I know. They're the greatest ever. Yes, actually, they're pretty good, to, to give them credit. I feel kind of bad for the Lions right now. They've lost three in a row. After that big start, they've lost three in a row. And, man, barely losing to Kansas City. Oh, it started with that. And then, yeah, and then they lost to the Slackers last week. And that was the most irritating thing ever. Now you lose to Minnesota at home. Ouch. So I do feel bad for Detroit a little bit. I, I don't like their fan base. They drive me nuts. And I know it's frustrating as hell to play against this team on the road. But... Gosh, to get it done in form field, pretty damn impressive. Pretty damn impressive. Uh, again, Ponder Memorial going to Xavier Rose. With that said, we will take a quick break and hop into the big, beautiful segment number two where we look at the NFL, look at the NFC North. Of course, this was one of the matchups. And then the Bears, the Bears are going against Teddy at the moment. And the Slackers did not slack off at all today. In fact, it was a reciprocal type of game. Let's just say it out loud. 42-24. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Green Bay, Oak Town soon to be Vegas town yeah whatever yeah whatever Packers are still in first but the Vikings are very much in second place now (laughs) they're very much in second place and it's a good feeling with that said so we'll talk to you in segment two back here on Purple Mafia, segment number two. Going to look around the NFL and into the NFC North and, of course, wrap up with next week's opponent, the Washington Redskins. Look at the history a bit. There's been a couple of important games with the Vikings and the Redskins over the years. So now let's jump around. Of course, a nice week for uh, Minnesota, no doubt about that. You got Philly and Dallas playing in the background here, as per usual. Segment number two in three tradition. Sunday Night Football, barely got this show out tonight. I'll leave that as personal. Barely got this show out tonight, though. Oof. Hmm. Yeah, Dallas is up 14-7 to at the moment. I'm recording this early uh, second quarter. Kansas City rolled all over those Denver Broncos today. Not the prettiest night ever. Uh, New England will be going to uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, to play the New York Jets. The New York Jerseys. No, the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. And, of course, Minnesota will be Thursday Night Football up and coming. Very cool stuff. Uh, Kansas City, though, on Thursday, romped all over the Denver Broncos. Again, the Denver Donkeys. Denver Broncos, after a little two-game win streak. Kansas City, after a two-game losing streak, finally. Back in the winner's column, 30-6. to Pretty easy win, but unfortunately an expensive situation here with Patrick Mahomes. Looked like it uh, could have been a super serious knee injury with the kneecap situation. Luckily, they're saying it could be three weeks, maybe four. Other people thought, who knows, maybe it's the whole damn season. Uh, Mahomes was unbelievable in the limited amount of time he was out there before the injury. 15, he attempted 11 passes and had completed 10 of them for 76 yards. So nothing big and deep or anything. I mean, you're going against Denver, one of the best defenses. It's just there's not a whole lot else going on with the Broncos. Though having a good defense isn't exactly a bad thing. It's, I think we know that here in town. Matt Moore the guy who defeated the Minnesota Vikings 
in 2009, and the infamous uh, Brett Favre almost got pulled out of the game game when we lost to the uh, stupid Carolina Panthers, just like we did in 2017, eight years later, to our extreme frustration, losing to the stupid Panthers that helped uh, screw up home field advantage along the way for both teams, of course, would have helped. Ultimately, the loss to Detroit is what cost us home field advantage in 2017, but I'm sure the Carolina game had a bit to do with it uh, as well, because one more win, one more actual win, would have made a huge difference one way or another. Same thing in 2009. Would have been nice to have home field over the New Orleans Saints. I kind of think the Vikings would have won that one. I kind of do. Over the Eagles, I have no idea. That didn't look good. Didn't look good at all. But, uh, well, we'll just let the past be the past, I guess. As I try not to cough to death. But uh, Matt Moore will be the quarterback against the Vikings most likely. And he'll be quarterbacking the Chiefs the next few weeks. Chiefs are not going to have home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. I think that's a done deal. I think that's a done deal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, 64 yards on the ground. Very solid. Kansas City defense helping as well. Tyreek Hill, a lot of people love him. He had a 74-yard game uh, over uh, during the course of this one. And Nicole Hardman, the other chief to get in the end zone as a wide receiver. Let's just move on. Easy win for Kansas City. Yuck, what a nasty game. Uh, San Francisco visiting the nation's capital. FedEx Fields, a team that's not very good right now. Adrian Peterson continuing to climb those charts. 81 yards today on 26 rushes. He'll be playing against the Minnesota Vikings on Thursday. Will be very, very cool. Very exciting for all of us to get to see Adrian Peterson against the Vikings for the first time. Well, second time, actually. Pardon me. We played against him with the Saints all the way back in 2017. So that was like right away. It was like, yeah, here's the Saints. A wet, nasty game in Washington, D.C. A 9 nothing victory. The uh, San Francisco Giants beat the Washington Senators. No, actually Washington Senators. Washington Nationals, pardon me. We're going to talk a teeny bit of baseball today. Might as well. But, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the Redskins some more. I'm jumping ahead here uh, illegally. This is going to be the uh, last game we'll really look at. But just saying, 9 nothing. That was nasty. <sighs> Washington Nationals, though, I'm, I am on their side 100% uh, going into the World Series. Um, God bless the Houston Astros. I'm glad they beat the Yankees. Nice little walk-off, blah, blah, blah. Crazy statistic that was brought up by multiple sources during the course of the week, and Brent Jacobson also brought it up to me uh, as well. But uh, I'd heard it about a week ago, but still, nothing wrong with bringing it up again because it's, well, hey, what if I didn't know? And uh, it's, a, it's valuable information. This is the first time in a century that the Yankees did not make it to the World Series in one of the decades, so to speak. So if that makes sense. All the way back to the 1910s, the 19-teens, 1910 and all that good stuff. New York Yankees that made, made it to the World Series at least once per decade. At least once per decade. One of the greatest franchises, in fact, the greatest franchise in sports history. Most likely with their uh, 27 championships. It just doesn't get much better than that. It really doesn't. Um, luckily, the Red Sox have been ahead slightly. It took them 86 years to get there, but they they got it. They finally started uh, beating the Yankees a little bit, and they've won more World Series than the Yankees since uh, 2004. So, nah, 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 boo-boo, right? Other than that, though, the Yankees have ruled sports in general for a century. And that walk-up home run was pretty telling, like, wow, they actually didn't get it this time. It's been a decade. It's been a whole decade and no Yankees in the World Series. The Yankees won the 2009 World Series, but no, I will be cheering for the uh, Washington Nationals. What an amazing run. Coming back against the Dodgers after the Dodgers beat them up a bit early, and ever since, they have just been sweeping everybody along the way. I hope they do the same to the Houston Astros, so I'll leave that alone. We'll come back to the Washington game later. That was distracting. That distracted me to make me think about baseball, and uh, started actually looking at that game a tiny bit when I shouldn't have. But, uh, yep, we'll get to see Adrian for the second time in uh, our franchise history as an opponent. Arizona Cardinals are winning games. They've won three in a row. They're 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. They might actually be able to talk a little playoff hunt over there in Arizona. It's not like they beat a great team today, but they beat a team with a, oh, yeah, they need an okay team. Um, they're okay. Uh, Saquon Barkley was healthy, 72 yards on the ground. Uh, eight yards receiving on three catches. Those are some pretty short plays there from uh, Daniel Jones. <laughs> didn't have a bad game. Didn't have a great day game. Uh, Kyler Murray had his least exciting game, I'd have to say. Didn't get in the end zone and 104 yards passing. And Chase Edmonds was really good with three touchdowns. What an amazing day for him with uh, David Johnson missing time. Now only one rush and not returning. But uh, Chase Edmonds looking like a starting running back today at the very least. Holy Toledo. Well, again, 
amazing stuff, I'd have to say. I'm pumping buttons here, which is no fun. Kyler Murray had a couple of yards on the ground, but uh, generally speaking, Saquon Barkley, decent, solid game. Got in the end zone once, and they the Giants ended up not winning the game. 27-21, nice road victory for the Arizona Cardinals. Definitely went to the run game, and a little bit of defensive fortune as well, getting a fumble on Chase Daniel. On Chase Daniel. Daniel Jones, now I'm going crazy. I'm thinking about the Bears. Pardon me, I'm losing my mind right now. Too many things floating around all over the place, but nothing that bad, nothing that bad. Just uh, a little out of control, and I did get a new phone today, which is nice. So, yeah, the other phone was fine. It's just the screen stuck out too far, and it kept cracking the gosh darn uh, screen protector, so I had enough of it. That was the Note 8, and I have the Note 10, which is uh, screen shrunk down a little bit uh, in terms of it's not bulging out of the bleeping case, which didn't make any sense. So this one fits beautifully, and it... Oh. Believe me, this phone's valuable for keeping up with games on occasion. Just a little while, uh, just every now and then, I should say. Indianapolis Colts hosting the Houston Texans, who'd been doing so well. Indianapolis Colts hanging in there. They're a first-place club in the AFC South. It's a 4-2 and record. Jacoby Brissett continues to be a starting quarterback. Absolutely. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, big game for the Houston Texans, getting in the century mark and nine catches and all that. Deshaun Watson... Going against a fairly frustrating Indianapolis Colts defense and had a couple turnovers in the game. Sacked a couple times, sacked three times. Jacoby Brissett tore up that pretty good Houston defense. Very impressive. This was definitely a divisional type of game here. And Indianapolis is in sole possession of first thanks to this victory. Four touchdowns for Jacoby Brissett. Very strong, super good performance. Did lose a fumble in the game, unfortunately for him. But that's Texas defense right there. Texans defense, uh, four touchdown passes like I mentioned Remember, set Naheem Hines, gosh, he's so far down that uh, depth chart. It's such a shame. Adam Vinatieri with four extra points. That's, I always like to bring that name up because, man, he a lot of good memories of that one. Uh, lots of good memories. We'll talk about the Patriots and, uh, no, the uh, Oakland Raiders and the uh, Green Bay Packers, the, the Packerets. Yeah, they've been killing people every dang week they win. Uh, it's no fun. It's no fun at all. And, of course, the back and forth. Uh, so we could talk about it, I guess, very briefly. Now we'll get back to that when we, yeah, freaking Lions and Packers. Ugh, Lions fans are very frustrated with NFL refs at the moment. Yes. Yes, they are. A couple of calls today they didn't like, and I don't know, not every call went against them. They just didn't. Uh, Cincinnati's looking like the Miami Dolphins right now, trying to get that uh, number one pick in the draft. Uh, <laughs> Andy Dalton, I mean, I don't know. He... You know, you know Andy Dalton is turning into. He's like, say, you're just starting a franchise, or like, just starting out, like it's a franchise, uh, an expansion team or something. He'd be your quarterback. That's pretty much where he is right now, pretty much, unless it's like a really high pick. But then you bury the poor guy. But he would be the band aid. He'd be the Matt Castle. That's pretty much what Andy Dalton is, is to me in my eyes now. Uh, Minshew, nice solid game for him, I guess. Not too bad at all. Not great. No, not bad. Not not good. I mean, neither quarterback was that great today. Poor uh, completion percentages. Just multiple turnovers for uh, Dalton. Three three interceptions. Minshew was just inaccurate, and Cincinnati's defense did a little bit of that as well. Their defense still, eh, there's not a whole lot of Zimmer left in that defense, but I, I got some. Some. Not a whole lot of that legacy re uh, remaining in Cincinnati. Just everything about them stinks right now. Leonard Fournette, uh, phenomenal on the ground. Minshew showing a little athleticism and mobility as well. Deed Westbrook, Deed Westbrook, led the Jaguars in receiving, but not in, but did not get in the end zone. Just a short play from Minshew into the end zone. Lambo, Josh Lambo made four field goals, four short field goals as uh, Jacksonville struggled to get in the end zone. Only got in once on the goal line on a passing play. Luckily, uh, luckily it wasn't an interception. <laughs> At the end of the day, I didn't want to look at this. This is garbage. It was a garbage game. Let's just uh, continue. Garbage. Miami-Buffalo used to be one of the great matchups in the AFC back in the old days. Uh, Buffalo Bills are 5-1. Five 5-1 and one. Five and one Buffalo Bills. They look fantastic. Jim Kelly must be the quarterback. Thurman Thomas must be the running back. And Andre Reid, wide receiver. And you got Bruce Smith. No, no, it's, it's uh, Josh Allen. And he's completing passes and... Running for some yards as well, 32 yards on the ground, couple pa couple touchdown passes, good solid game against a yucky Miami team. I mean, I don't know anybody looks good against the Dolphins right now. They're 0-6. Pardon me for that. 0-6 club. 
Ryan Fitzpatrick better numbers than Josh Rosen the past couple weeks, though. My goodness, Josh Rosen's like a freaking zombie. Uh, Frank Gore, the future Hall of Famer and former Dolphin and longtime former Washington, uh, Washington Redskin, longtime former uh, San Francisco 49er, 55 yards on the ground, slid lowly, just kind of hanging on to that fourth place, which is probably where he's going to end up at the end of the day. Really hard to catch the Walter Paytons, Barry Sanders, and uh, the Curtis, you know, and um, Emmett Smith's of the world. Those guys are impossible. He actually did pass Curtis Martin, which is freaking impossible. Hard to believe. Hard to believe you could be able to do that, but good job. 0-6 Dolphins, 5-1 and Buffalo Bills. Good on the Bills. They're rolling along. Rolling, rolling, rolling along. Los Angeles Rams, they finally won another game. It took forever, and they're in third place in their division. 4-3 and record. Very mediocre team that looks like, uh, well, I mean, very mediocre start to the season. They look like a team that lost the Super Bowl. This is usually what happens. It's a, we lost the Super Bowl hangover, and usually you're just not as good the next year. And the Falcons look like they're done. I mean, they've been done. And the most games they could win if they run the table the rest of the way, win nine games in a row, is 10-6. and six. I thought Atlanta was going to be about 10-6, and 11-5-ish. And, and they are kaput. The Atlanta Falcons are kaput. Done. Just like the Red Baron was when he said that word. Yeah, those were his last words. Kaput when he was uh, when he did not survive his last uh, dogfight after being successful over a hundred times in World War One. There's your little bit of history there. Pretty freaking impressive stuff by the Red Baron <sighs> in Germany in World War One. German fighter, fi- fighter pilot. Whew. That's about what Atlanta. I don't know. Atlanta's no Red Baron. That's for sure. They just stink. And the Rams put up 37 points against a team that's. Going to be looking for a new coach. Uh, they should be fine at quarterback and everything, even though he did not have a good game. And Tom Brady didn't have a good game against the Rams, okay? So let's be fair. Matt Bleep and Schaub back to life again. He threw for almost a perfect game out there. In fact, he completed all of his passes and did get a touchdown along the way. But oof da, oof da. That is just, uh, that's an awful game. Um, it was 30-3 to at one point. This is the kind of game where it's almost like, Dan Quinn, uh, thank you for your uh, services. Thank you for the... NFC Championship, it's been good. This is what kind of game this is. You just might find out on Monday morning that Dan Quinn's no longer the coach of the Falcons, but maybe it doesn't even matter at this stage. Ryan Tannehill, nice comeback type of game against the Los Angeles Chargers, who are another team that's not going to win a whole lot of games this year. In fact, they're going to be in the top 10 in the draft, I think at the very least, 2-5 and five now. I mean, they were so good last year, and a lot of us had them getting to the NF, uh, AFC title game this year. And they're not going to any AFC title game this year at all. Uh, Tennessee isn't either. They're three and four. They're very mediocre. But awesome game by Ryan Tannehill, though. To be fair, he's better than Marcus Mariota right now. 312 yards, two touchdown passes. Rivers was actually pretty solid. But I don't know. It just wasn't their day once again. What else is there to say? The Chargers are just uh, disappointing to say the least. I mean, they're just ugh. They're just balls right now. Whoa, whoa. Now, this was probably, out of all the games today, this has to be the surprise and has to be a... This is a, this is a good one, man. This is a really good one. Baltimore literally rolling all over Seattle in CenturyLink Field. I can't even believe it. CenturyLink Field, they rolled all over the Seattle Seahawks. I would love to see the Minnesota Vikings do something like this. 30-16 to 16 over the Seahawks. Uh, Lamar Jackson, not that great of a game. He threw for a touchdown pass, but... Uh, not that great, uh, or at least he ran for one, excuse me. Uh, not very good quarterback day for him, 9 for 20 overall. Got sacked once, but he didn't turn the ball over, so he kind of game-managered it, but then he went Michael Vick. In terms of running the ball and getting the ball forward, he had a 30-yard uh, scamper, got in the end zone and all that. An impressive uh, overall day for uh, Lamar Jackson. Seattle had the game tied up at, at, the, at halftime and then during the third quarter, very late in the third quarter. Lamar Jackson was able to rush to get the uh, Baltimore Ravens ahead, 20-13. to 13. So a pretty tight game in the first half, but Baltimore kind of gradually but surely kind of took off. And then DK Metcalf fumbled. It would end up being a fumble six, one-yard gain, uh, deep deep in their own territory, Seattle, about the 18-yard line, and uh, it was recovered by Marlon Humphrey. So good for the Baltimore Ravens adding something with their defense as well. So Baltimore's defense isn't what it was, of course. They're not the 2000 Ravens. They're not the 2012 Ravens and all that. But still, an overall very, very solid performance by the Baltimore Ravens. And well played. 5-2 and two record. And 
I think that division is absolutely theirs. I mean, who, who's going to take the division away from the uh, Baltimore Ravens right now? I don't know. I don't think Cleveland's going to do it. Pittsburgh's not going to do it. And Cincinnati? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Big uh, big win for Baltimore. This is definitely a signature win for that franchise. Uh, as, you know, they've been quiet for a while. And Huge game, though. Huge game for Baltimore. Good for Lamar Jackson. At least if he couldn't do it with his arm, he did it with his feet. And good for him. Saints visiting Chicago and Soldier Field and all that. And the Chicago Bears are 3-3 three and three and they're a game behind the Vikings. And, well, the Vikings are in sole position of second place. The Bears are in sole position of third. And Detroit's back kind of in the same area. Well, I I, I, I guess it's... I guess Detroit technically is ahead. I, I don't know. They have their 3-3 three, three and 1. Kind of a weird record for them. Um, actually, 2-2 two, two and 1. Weird, weird record for Detroit. They had the bye week and all that. Uh, as did the Bears weird situation. 2-3-1, and one, pardon me. So that would put the Bears ahead. Uh, New Orleans Saints, 6-1. and one. They are they've got to be one of the big favorites here in the NFC. It's got to be New Orleans Green Bay right now. But Minnesota, I think, is a strong, strong one. Uh, former Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings. We'll say that in, in uh, <laughs> we'll say that plurally. Teddy Bridgewater, a couple touchdowns, almost 300 yards. Very good game against the Chicago Bears team. That's not the same. Uh, in Soldier Field right now. A uh, huge win for the New Orleans. Obviously, Teddy's got the uh, the weapons, but so did Kirk Cousins. But the Saints uh, offensive coordinator is handling things really well here. And, of course, Teddy Bridgewater with that good hand on his shoulders. My goodness, didn't turn the ball over once. Only sacked once. And good offensive line in New Orleans. That freaking helps as well, I got to think, compared to what was going on here. Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray, because uh, Alvin Kamara out. Latavius Murray. 119 yards, two touchdowns. What a fantasy night for him. Had a fantasy afternoon anyway. Four and a half yards a carry. Mr. Consistency, Mr. Excellence. Latavius Murray, what a beautiful day. 17 yards for a long, yet still managed four and a half yards a carry. Beautiful. Nice to see the former Vikings do well and a guy who probably could have been a Viking wide receiver and fit right in and been a super team with uh, Thielen and Diggs. Oh my goodness, Michael Thomas. Just every week it's like 130, 140, 130. No touchdowns for Michael Thomas in this one, but still an outstanding performance by uh, Michael Thomas. Wow. And uh, Taysom Hill also trying to one of those trick plays back at quarterback, receiving a touchdown from Teddy Bridgewater. It's one creative offensive coordinator versus another with uh, Nagy over there in uh, <laughs> Chicago. Oh, Chicago, Chicago. Mm-mm. It's not like Trubisky had a bad game, but he wasn't that great either. At the same time, he did get a couple of touchdowns, but generally speaking, do you really want Trubisky attempting 54 passes? I mean, I don't think you're going to win a whole lot of games that way. Uh, just, uh, what the flip, Saunders. And I, I know that they were playing from behind pretty much the whole way. In fact, they were. But it was pretty close for a while. The whole first half, it was close. I, I don't know. I mean, why don't you use your running game a little bit when it's a close game? I mean, the Bears actually led for a tiny bit, you know, in the second quarter there. And then down, down, down things went. I mean, Tariq Cohen ran the ball three times. That's your leading rusher. Three times. Three. Three times. David Montgomery twice. Cordero Patterson once. But Cordero Patterson, to his credit, had a 102-yard kick return today. So that's the Cordero Patterson you remember. This is something that feels like it's been extinct from the NFL the last three or four years, especially since Cordero Patterson left the Vikings anyway. And actually went to the Bears and then the Patriots and then back to the Bears again. He got a ring last year. Pretty cool. Um, happy for him there. Goes back to the Bears again and uh, nice game. <laughs> nice game, at least in the kick return department. Oof, the 102-yard return. That's enough to really uh, make things look a little better. But unfortunately, again, for the Bears, 36-25. The B has our 3-3 three and three and things are not looking so great. Vikings already played Detroit and did a good job. We talked about that in the first segment. No kidding. Green Bay 6-1, and one, just like the Saints, and they rolled all over a 3-3 three and three Oakland team, who the Vikings kicked their butt, but uh, the Bear, they, they, they beat the Bears just recently. Crazy. That was in jolly old England there. Derek Carr. Derek Carr, very solid performance, considering almost 80%, but then Aaron Rodgers, like a perfect game. In fact, it was a perfect game. 158.3. It doesn't get more perfect than that. Five touchdown passes, 80 yards. You know how Kirk Cousins had the big passing game against the Oakland Raiders? So did Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers had a good passing game against the uh, Raiders as well. Again, it was a perfect game, basically. I mean, no turnovers. He got sacked once. 
He got sacked once. Almost 14 yards per attempt, 429 yards. <coughs> Oakland Raiders, one week their defense looks good. The next week they are, uh, boy, they're just destroyed. And Aaron Rodgers led the Packers in running, too, which is, no, Aaron Jones. What am I saying? I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I only had two rushes. I'm just teasing. I had to say that. I had to see, I, I had to see if you were paying attention. 50 yards on the ground from Aaron Jones. <laughs> I had to do it. Oh, I'm losing it. But I had to do it. That's because I'm I'm just so goofy. But uh, yep, good uh, decent game on the ground, I guess, for Aaron Jones. But nothing spectacular. Just moved the chains when he needed to. Uh, Darren Waller. That name looks so weird. I keep wanting to say Walker. But uh, what a good performance by the Oakland tight end. That guy is probably the star of the team, other than Josh Jacobs, who had a, also had a huge game. Both of them running for a buck twenty-five ish, uh, receiving for a buck twenty-five anyway. In Waller's case. As Orson's favorite player, Darren Waller, dominating Orson Pig of uh, Garfield Show and all that. Vikings would be in the wild card if the season ended today, along with Seattle. So we would be playing the Cowboys, and Green Bay would be hosting Seattle. Interesting. That'd be an interesting couple of matchups. We'd be heading to Dallas. Dallas is in first place in that crappy division. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it sucks. If you don't win your division, you're going on the road, dang it. And that stinks. You're going on the road, boy. And then, uh, yeah, and then you got to play San Francisco or New Orleans. It's kind of cool. It's cool to see San Francisco is undefeated still. Okay, well, that's the next game we're going to look at. And not because San Francisco is so great. Well, uh, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're, they're good. They're 6-0, and and their defense is good. And, again, I keep saying they're reminding me of the 97 Niners. Very good defense, good quarterback, and kind of running back by committee type of situation. Um, San Francisco is doing really well. Jimmy Garoppolo was not that good today. Uh, I would hope the Vikings... <laughs> I would hope Kirk Cousins is going to be doing just fine against the uh, Washington Redskins. Case Keenum was actually halfway decent in the game, and that will be Case Keenum and Adrian Peterson going against the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday. 81 yards on the ground for AP, and surprise, surprise of the decade. He fumbled in the game. Adrian Peterson fumbled. Hopefully he does that against us. Let's take a look at Minnesota and Washington history here. But they know there have been a couple of playoff games or near playoff games. 13-13 and 13 all time. And, of course, both of these teams have been around for a while. And it's crazy to think they didn't actually play each other until 1968. So they took a while to actually be able to uh, play against each other, kick off against each other. This thing is showing it from the Redskins' point of view for some reason. It's different every week. But 13-13, and 13, I just got to look at the losses as wins for Minnesota, of course. Vikings won the first all-time game and were 5-2. and two through 1980 over the Redskins. Pretty cool. A couple of playoff games along the way in 73. Vikings won a divisional championship game to went on to play the Rams in both 73 and 76 to go on to the Super Bowl. This was back when uh, division playoff games were in January or were in December, not January. So pretty interesting when you think about that. As you move forward, NFC title games are always in January at the very least. Uh, <laughs> the Super Bowls weren't February 5th or whatever like they are nowadays, but that's just how it is. Um, Vikings won that first playoff game if I just mentioned 27-20 and three years later almost to the well to the week anyway Vikings roll all over the Redskins went on to get to back to their next Super Bowl after beating the Rams a week later but only to lose to the Raiders and never return to the Super Bowl again that sucks Washington Redskins then beat the Vikings in the playoffs and after the 82 season in early January they're 83 21 to 7 Vikings then got beat how many times in a row by the Redskins? This franchise just owned us after that. Um, just flat out owned the Vikings after that playoff game. It was, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row, including the NFC Championship game, Heartbreaker. Vikings and Redskins so close, but Vikings only managed 10 points against a good Redskins defense. Darren Nelson unable to bring in a not very accurate, kind of a low pass uh, low kind of underthrown pass that would have tied the game up would not have given the Vikings the win unless maybe we go for two and win it Redskins go on to defeat the Broncos easily in the Super Bowl after that and much to our chagrin another game where the Vikings would have won the Super Bowl Vikings would have won the Super Bowl that year the Vikings would have easily won the Super Bowl in 75 if not for the push-off Vikings would have won the Super Bowl in 2009 over the Colts I believe though Vikings had never beaten uh, Peyton Manning, though, that might have been the time to do it, I guess. The Vikings would not have beaten the Patriots, I don't believe, in uh, 2017, so to speak. I don't think we would have. I just don't, because 
yeah, it's not because I like the Patriots. It's because the Vikings have never beaten Brady, and it's never even been close. So um, I don't know. I just don't think we would have. They barely lost to the Eagles, and we got crushed by the Eagles, so look at it that way. I do think the 98 Vikings would have had a tough time against the Broncos in 98. I do, and I hate saying that. The Vikings would not have beaten the Baltimore Ravens in 2000. I, nope, that team was not ready. Cole Pepper and all them were not ready. And, well, the Giants were shut out 31 to nothing, if I remember correctly. So that's like a 70-point loss for the Vikings. Okay, I'm just playing around there. Oh, woof, duh. Remember, the Vikings won a pretty big game over the Giant uh, Redskins in a very close game, 14-9, to very low-scoring game that helped the Vikings clinch a playoff berth. So the Vikings semi made up for the playoff loss the year before in 92, way back when I was becoming a new Viking fan, even though I should have been a fan earlier. But uh, Vikings score on a pick six over uh, with Mark Ripley and never score again. It was 7 nothing Vikings, and the Vikings never scored again. 24-7, to depressing, boring, crappy game. Redskins got crushed by San Francisco the next week. It was like, whatever. F you, Washington. You know, even though they were the defending Super Bowl champs about nine months earlier. Okay, that was more than that. It was like 11 months earlier in the Metrodome, of all places, back in 92, where they beat the Bills pretty easily. Uh, Vikings destroyed the Washington Redskins in 98, and I was at that game, and that was the Daryl Green game, where Daryl Green played pretty good coverage on Moss, but Moss was kept out of the end zone, but the Vikings still crushed that uh, Gus Verrott led Washington team pretty easily, 41-7. to Lots of fun seeing the Vikings roll over a crappy Redskins team. Redskins then... Uh, couple of big wins over a Viking team trying to make the playoffs with Brad Johnson 21-18, to heartbreaker and 2007 the Redskins came into the Metrodome and beat the crap out of us God, Cooley and a tight end and all them and I was very frustrated, that game ended up killing the Vikings chances of making the playoffs oh yeah, 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 and then the Redskins got crappy, the little Donovan McNabb here and then McNabb was here and Vikings beat those teams pretty easily. Joe Webb beat the uh, Redskins in 2011, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yes, yes. Because I don't think that was Ponder. It couldn't have been. Uh, no, Ponder, yeah, Ponder wasn't playing in that game. <laughs> Let's not even go there. Yeah, luckily that game didn't cause the Vikings uh, too much of a draft pick there. Redskins rolled over the Vikings pretty good in 2012. That was a frustrating game. I believe was, uh, yeah, that was in the uh, RG3 at quarterback during that that game. Yep. <laughs> Redskins, Vikings rolled over the Redskins in 2013 in another game where he wanted to get a higher draft pick, I guess, because we were already out of the playoffs. We had a good game there. Uh, 2014 recently, Vikings beat the Redskins there. Pretty much owned the Kirk Cousins era pretty good, pretty well. And then the last time we played the Redskins, Kirk Cousins was the quarterback. Case Keenum had a beautiful game, but Cousins kept them in the game, 38-30. to Very fun game during that 2017 season. Lots of fun indeed. And the other Redskins game was very frustrating in 2016, killing the Vikings' chances of making the playoffs during the course of that one. Ouch. Yeah. What? Well, 13-13, and and I'm going on and on about the history, but it's fun to look at. To me, there's really no excuse why the Vikings shouldn't beat the Washington Redskins. I mean, all, all respect in the world to... The Redskins, they're an NFL team, the NFL players, an NFL quarterback, a Hall of Fame running back, blah, 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 blah. We all know who the Hall of Fame running back is. I think you can figure out who that is by now. Uh, but it's just like at the end of the day, how do you feel about everything? Uh, you know, there's no reason why the Vikings should lose to the Washington Redskins. I mean, there's not a whole lot of, not a whole lot going on in Washington right now. Not a whole lot of good vibes. Keenum is just, you know, he's just kind of a Band-Aid. Hoskins is not ready to go at all, honestly. Uh, Redskins have been giving up points. They only gave up nine today, and that wasn't good. But before that, they they were really giving up a lot of points, almost 28 a game there. The only team, yeah, there's only a couple teams worse than them, like Arizona, Tampa, Atlanta, and Miami. You don't want to be in the same conversation as them. But some might say Washington is actually worse than most of those teams. Their overall scoring defense has not been good at the end of the day. Given up in yardage, so Washington's like in the bottom fourth of the league there. It's not been good. Uh, rush, rushing defense for Washington is 
way near the bottom. They give up 134 yards. So enjoy a nice, fun game. Delvin Cook next week, I got to think. And pass defense is a little bit better. 250, 251. But I do expect Kirk Cousins to be motivated and ready to roll against the Washington Redskins going into next week. Boy, New England is just killing everybody in the interceptions. Whew, 14, and the next team is 9. Washington, boy, Washington actually has seven on the season, so you might see you might see Kirk Cousins throw his first interception, like earned interception in in a couple of weeks here. Obviously, last week he did have an interception, but it was, uh, yeah, give me a break. That was uh, batted in the air. Might as well have been a volleyball. Uh, <laughs> so their pass defense is respectable. Their run defense is way at the bottom, like in the in the twenties. They're way near the bottom there. So I don't really fear Washington's run defense. If you can run on a team, you you know you're probably going to win the game because you're going to control the clock. If you're able to move the chains and the way Delvin Cook has been playing, if he can bleep and stay healthy, there's just no reason why the Vikings shouldn't win the game. I think Cook is going to get a lot of yards in the game. I think the Vikings have the lead, and you're going to be focusing on the run. Uh, Alexander Madison, I expect him to get in the, like 50 yard range, and I expect him to get a uh, in the end zone. I think Alexander Madison gets in the end zone, maybe another C.J. Ham type of touchdown. Maybe uh, Amir Abdullah has some run, Mike Boone, something like that. But you're going to see a lot of running game. You're going to see Kirk Cousins still have another big shot game. You're not going to see Adam Thielen play. You will not be seeing Adam Thielen play in the game because it's not worth it. And it's not because you're cocky and just want to push a team aside. It's because it's not worth it. You know, even if you're playing the bleeping Chiefs with uh, Patrick Mahomes, it's not worth it because you might bleep up his whole season. Do you really want to do that? Or do you want to, like, take your... Do you, you want to, like, give him a chance to heal? That would be wise. Uh, U.S. Bank Stadium, it's going to be a fun game. Hopefully it's 41-7 to and the Vikings just roll. I don't think it's going to be quite that high scoring. But I do expect Minnesota to score points. I expect to see a good, solid ground game where the Vikings control the ball, control possession, and there's really not a whole lot Case Keenum and Adrian Peterson can do. Don't expect Adrian Peterson to get over 50 yards in the game. I don't think he will. And if he does, good on him. Maybe he'll be loose for a second, and that'll boost his stats up and uh, get him moving up that, that ladder a little bit in the Hall of Fame numbers. But uh, at the end of the day, there's no reason why the Vikings shouldn't win the game with the way this offense is playing, along the likes of 31, 35-ish, 31 to, uh, gosh, 31 to 14. I'm picking Minnesota to beat the Washington Redskins in U.S. Bank Stadium, 31-14. Something along those li- uh, along the lines. Don't be surprised if there's a turnover in the game, but the Vikings will be fine. Kirk Cousins throws for three or four touchdowns, 300 yards, something like that. Maybe 280, but Delvin Cook gets to the century mark, and I think Madison will get uh, at or near 50 in the game, and I think Alexander Madison gets in the end zone. The way the Vikings lose the game is they just don't show up. Like, they just flat out don't show up. And Washington, for some strange reason, is just on a mission, kind of like the Buffalo Bills last year. That would be the only way the Vikings lose this game. Uh, I love the momentum the Vikings have right now. It's just a matter of do you just flat out not show up and you're just completely, like, mentally checked out like they were against Buffalo, which I still to this day don't know what happened in that game. I don't know what happened. It's like the bottom came right out of the building. Um, I don't see that happening. I like the momentum of this team. The last year's team never was on a momentum run like this. They never were this were playing with this type of uh, confidence, this type of precision. Minnesota wins 31-14. Enough said. We'll be back to look at some fan interaction and wrap up the show. After this, this one might be slightly shorter than the last few, just because, I guess. We are back here on Purple Mafia, segment number three, fan interaction. No call-ins today unless I missed something, but I'm not seeing it right now, so <laughs> I'm not seeing it. So we shall continue on to the Twitter account, at Purple Mafia Show, at Purple Mafia Show. I want to thank Vince Germano, Lakers Pies Browns, for retweeting the most recent episode 300. What an amazing honor it truly was. I hope you liked the uh, last couple of minutes there where I talked about the, the past. So if you're interested in checking that out, go ahead and backtrack and Listen to the last 10, 15 minutes of it just to hear what I had to say, kind of reflecting on the past and uh, looking at how we got to Purple Mafia and uh, how that show was named and uh, kind of just reflecting on the years a little bit, not for too long, but a little while there. It was a lot of fun, indeed. Mad Martin says, once again, congrats on the 300 podcasts. Look, 
Look to listening later today. As to the Pro Bowl, suddenly these games against KC and Dallas look very winnable. And yes, they do. They, they really do look significantly more winnable. Indeed. Brent Jacobson says, hey, Joey, congrats on episode 300. And thank you so much, Brent Jacobson out of Lakeville. Matt Martin, Dave Martin out of Northern Scotland there. And Brent uh, also adds a very nice skull image as well. Very cool. Very classic looking there. We will slide upward and upward and upward. At Purple Mafia Show is the Twitter account. Again, a reminder, Patrick Mahomes will miss three weeks or more. We'll see what happens, depending on what takes place there. There's, this is a coffee mug that says, There is a Viking in all of us. And Mad Martin says, In my case, this is so true. And I believe he may have been drinking out of that big mug there. Or he was just taking a picture, but pretty cool stuff. And Tanae Brown retweeting my release there with uh, a quote of his own. Thank you again, Tanae, also for retweeting the show. He says, congratulations on 300 eps, episodes, yep, he's just saying eps, to one of the best in the business. Thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to many more in the future, mate. Appreciate all your time and hard work, and thank you so much. I appreciate the loyalty and the friendship, and love the uh, call-ins when he's able to do that on Timberwolves Explosion, and he's more than welcome to do it on this show as well. I know today's a very busy guy as well, though, so definitely hard work. Uh, Dave Martin, Mad Martin, a hard-working son of a gun as well. So that's why sometimes people are unable to call in or whatever, and that's how it is. But Twitter and Facebook work just fine, even if it's just one tweet. One tweet a week is better than nothing, I'll tell you that. Just, you know, and if it's 15 tweets, that's fantastic. Love hearing from all of you that are able to do that tweets or comments on Facebook. Vince Germano says only 300, huh? LOL, congrats, my brother. <laughs> that was a fun thing. Yeah, but I was saying how it's, uh, uh, what, what, what was my response? Let's see, well, I'll get back to that in a second. Sam, Gam, Sam Gupta, Sam Gupta out of California says, Hey, Purple Mafia, I fell behind a few episodes, but finally had a chance to listen to the Eagles recap. Great job as always, and congrats on reaching the 300th episode milestone. And thank you so much, Sam Gupta, a definite Purple Mafia Hall of Famer. He was inducted into it last year. Oh, God bless him. Thank you so much for that. I was saying, I was kind of joking around how I uh, got to, I <laughs> got to, uh, I was joking around a bit with Vinrock. I was saying he hurt my feelings. That'd be uh, Vince Romano. And he says, I said it because we just hit 350. Yep. <laughs> and I said, well, I, 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 overall I have, I have like 815, but you know, when you combine the three shows, but hey, 350 is uh, good stuff though. It's good stuff indeed. I was joking around. Um, I was saying how I just literally shut down in the summer. Might have been at 500, but no, just playing around back and forth with each other there. That was fun. Vinrock, Vince Germano. First met him with the Timberwolves Explosion podcast and the Courtside podcast is what Vinrock, Vince Germano is a part of with uh, Wayne Hunt and Stu Benson. What an amazing basketball show. Huge shout out and big recommendation towards them. They're releasing a new show very soon. And you'll hear a very familiar voice doing an introduction announcement to that podcast as well. Possibly. Uh, possibly. If that person qualified to uh, get on that show that that way. But uh, no, what a fun group of guys. And I've been on that show before and it's oh, they're amazing. Just love them. Australia. Australia Australia's finest without a doubt. Mad Martin says, missed the game sitting on the beach so I go to watch it and cannot watch it in this region. Had to go download a VPN to watch it and ouch. At least you got to be on the beach but uh Oh, bummer that now they're screwing around with you with that. And it's, it's always it's always harder than it should be, isn't it? Ali Sidikai, yep, was talking about how the Vikings really need to not tempt their fates and let Thielen sit out a week. And I was saying, have to agree on that. There's no reason the Vikings shouldn't beat the Redskins on Thursday. And he says that, and it could linger all year if he doesn't sit. And exactly, I mean, that would buzzkill the season for Adam Thielen, and we can't afford that. And Vikings, if there's any hope that there's a window here of some kind of a playoff run, we better get rolling on that ASAP. Looks like that's it for Twitter. Thanks again, guys, for those tweets. Very, very, very cool. So now we'll go to Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Purple Mafia Show. Also, a quick shout out to MN Vikings Haven. MN Vikings Haven. Trevor Wicker in the founder of that page, kind enough to allow me to post links to Purple Mafia on that Facebook page. Uh, so I'm more than kind to give them a shout out and recommendation to join that page. In game threads during the week, news, this and that, and I've seen many of you have been on there before. Nice of you to hop on board that one as well. 
So we'll move on. Uh, leaving off from last week, Leland posted right as my show was uploaded on the internet, so onto iTunes or whatever. So Leland says, solid, good, solid game. Nice to see Diggs' cousins earn their paycheck this week. Back to individ, uh, a divisional game next week. Going to be tough. I have a feeling, fellas, and luckily the Vikings were ready to play today, more than some of us may have thought they would be. Gerald Swing out of Nebraska says, Joey, great show as usual. Congratulations on the big number 300 to the Viking, to the best Vikings podcast on the planet. Always my favorite time of the week when the next episode rolls out. Love all the, interac- the interaction, comments, call-ins from the Purple Aunt Mafia Nation. Hopefully many more episodes to follow in the future. Appreciate all the time, work, and effort you put in. Especially, lo- love your knowledge of sports history, stats, and all the other special touches you bring that other national programs just don't have, and I can't thank you enough, Gerald. That was very heartfelt, and that means uh, yeah, it means a hell of a lot to me. It it really does. <clears throat> it really does. Uh, your favorite time of the week. Wow, that's that's a big deal. Thank you. I mean, God bless you, man. God bless you. Thank you so much, Gerald String in the Purple Mafia Hall of Fame. Dave Hickey as well says, "Oh my God, I forgot, Joey. Congratulations on the big 300. Quite a milestone, my friend. And thank you so much, Dave. It's been a long road but it's been it's been fun it's generally speaking been pretty damn fun um the eagles released zach brown after last week that was pretty crazy i saved that for now obviously and most of you knew about it already but they released zach brown because it's like what's he doing and he didn't exactly have a good game and didn't want to back up anything he said didn't want to apologize for anything he said just pushed the media away that was pretty stupid so they ended up releasing him during the week because um, it just wasn't worth it. Gerald String on Nebraska says, open mouth, insert foot, and not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure, Gerald. Whew. And I think I accidentally posted that one twice, and there were four comments on this one. Yep, Gerald says the same thing there. It's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Well, where's the others? Show them all. Show them all. All comments. Come one, come all, right? Brett McCarthy, South Dakota, and everything just went up and disappeared. That's really nice. Thank you, Facebook, for doing that. Ah, man. That's... I don't know why I did that. That's really weird. Just show all the damn comments. Thank you very much. Okay. Brett McCarthy says, Vikings should hire him to motivate Cousins to get him all fired up. LOL. I couldn't agree more with that one. Mark Carlson says, Hey, Joey. That's funny, eh, Joey? (laughs) Yes, it is funny. I couldn't believe it. But at the same time, I guess it's just, it's unbelievable how stuff can turn as quickly as it did. Yeah, my goodness. Let's look at all the uh, comments now for the in-game thread. Not everything, but we'll kind of dig around a little bit and then get to the post-game thread. We'll definitely get to all of those for sure. Mike Filler, Stu, Stu Stevens says, Here we go with the referees and their pass interference calls. Yep, that was on Rhodes. I'm so tired of that deciding games, and it's not just this game. It's all the games in the NFL. The officials are getting ridiculous. The calls are so inconsistent. And, yes, the illegal hands to the face. I didn't even talk about that. I said I was going to in segment two, but I jumped into the Vikings-Redskins game and babbled on about the Bears, I suppose. Um, It just kind of is what it is. I mean, yep. Some very cheap calls. Illegal hands to the face twice on Flowers of Detroit. Neither one of them is... Neither one of them should have been called, but it was a good acting job by the Packer linebacker or Packer uh, lineman there. And uh, the calls were made. Detroit would have won the game most likely if not for those calls. And it's, I don't know, that's why I feel bad for Detroit today. It's games like that. And it would have been nice to have the Packers with, the, with another loss and the Vikings would be tied with them. Yes, Green Bay has a tiebreaker over Minnesota for now, but they're not going to beat us in U.S. Bank Stadium. And who's to say that uh, we might not pass them? It could happen. It's going to be harder now because Green Bay is just not losing anymore. It's frustrating. Brett McCarthy says, uh, I knew we'd be playing the refs today. Josh Mayer, Henry, Colorado says, need this win bad. Big division game on the road. Can't start the year 0-3 in the division. And luckily, the Minnesota Vikings did not do that. Hallelujah. Amen to that, eh? Dave Hickey says, I knew this was going to be a tough game. Let's get a touchdown. Yep, and it was a it was a tough game, but the, it got interesting as we kept moving. Shelby Lund says, I hate prevent defense. Zimmer being this great defensive mind sure likes to give up big chunks of yards in the final minutes. And yes, yes, that seems to keep happening, doesn't it? Good, good thoughts there, Shelby. 
good thoughts. You're a star candidate, and there's a fact. It's just a flat-out fact. Josh Henry says, uh, Mayor Henry says, bleep-ass defense receivers are wide bleeping open. Yeah, yeah, they were. And I, I never understood that. Just giving up too much bleeping space on a lot of them. Even um, Mike Hughes was guilty of that during the course of the game. I mean, it's just well-executed, well-timed routes, and good footwork and all that, but it's still bleeping frustrating because it just keeps happening. Uh, Justin Mayer Henry out of Colorado says, Waking up extremely late, turn the game on for the Vikings, first three and out of the day. Why do you do this to me, LOL? And that's after playing so well, they had that three and out. Yep, I remember that after they'd been just dominating. Bailey missed a kick. Diggs with the dagger. That was beautiful. The 66-yard gain. Rhodes got beat down the stretch. But that Diggs, huge overall day, day getting in the ends and, and everything. Kurt back was really frustrated with the bleeping penalties. And, yeah, it's just, you know, back and forth. There's Cedric Paulding. There he is. Cool. He says, we might have to win a shootout today because the defense stayed in Minneapolis. And it sure seemed like it, didn't it, Cedric? <laughs> Yep, it sure seemed like it. It sure seemed like it, Cedric, out of Mississippi there. Future Hall of Famer for this show. Brett McCarthy, very active today. Again, love it. Love, love, love Brett McCarthy. That's why he is in the Hall of Fame for Purple Mafia because he's so active. He keeps this thing moving. Josh Mayer, Henry, a big part of that as well. Says He, uh, he says, uh, Brett McCarthy says, Rhodes can't cover anyone anymore. Brett McCarthy says, or excuse me, Josh Mayer Henry says, he is starting to become a liability with all the PI calls and lack of coverage. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a big problem. It really has. Kurt says, stupid GD penalties. Oh, why did I write, write a comment? I guess that's about it, though. <coughs> but overall, overall, good game. Kurt back says, here we go with Rhodes again. He got to go. Dave Hickey responds with, Rhodes are definitely not closed anymore, but unless we get a high draft pick, I can't see getting better than him. He gets beat a couple times a game, usually for a touchdown, but they all get beat sooner or later. And yeah, there is no perfect quarterback. There really isn't. So, But uh, Rhodes, yeah, he is definitely uh, a step behind what he once was, and it's disappointing. It is. So now we'll look at the comments in the post-game thread. All bleeping comments would be appreciated. Justin Mayer Henry Colorado says... Won a bet with the Lions fan, so now he has to roll with this beautiful picture of Cousins for a week. And that's his uh, profile picture. Daniel McDiarmid, with all those Detroit Pistons players in the background. That was during the championship Detroit Pistons era. Now with Isaiah Thomas, but with Chauncey Billups, Ben Wallace, and such. <sighs> and you got Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is his profile picture because he lost a bet. That's funny. Oh, 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 oh. He's probably getting some grief, that poor guy. Mm. Justin Mayer Henry, nice one. That was awesome. Eric Mustard says, Cousins' stats for the last few wins have been excellent, and the O-line didn't allow a single sack. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Isn't that great? It's just freaking awesome, huh? Um, Kirk Cousins, yep, 3-3-7 today, four touchdowns. 3-3-3 last week, four touchdowns, and the unearned interception. New York Giants, 306, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. So he's had one interception in five weeks, and it was him being Kirk Cousins, of course. And it was a batted up pass that was literally like volleyed up in the air, set up for a spike. It is well have been. Should have been volleyball. But yeah, Vikings 4-1 and one in the past five weeks. That crappy loss to the Bears. Kirk Cousins still, actually, his completion percentage was decent. He just, But he was just, generally speaking, very mediocre during the course of that game. And it was freaking frustrating. And it didn't help that he got sacked six freaking times. That... That's a lot. Uh, Oakland, very conservative game plan, but uh, the Vikings ran all over that club because Oakland's run defense is much weaker than their pass defense. And um, quite the opposite with uh, Washington. Their pass defense is respectable. It's below average, but it's respectable. Uh, they give up a billion yards on the ground. And, you know, I guess you got to factor in the Redskins have been behind in, like, every game. So, of course, they're going to give up a lot of Redskins yards. So you, you got to think about that as well. But the fact that they do give up those yards, it means something. There's a reason why they're behind, and there's a reason why they're giving up those yards. Those yards don't happen as easily if it's a uh, really good uh, run defense. Then, well, maybe the Redskins are winning more games. So it's kind of on them. Yeah, but great uh, five-week uh, stat line there, Eric Mostard. Thank you very much. Out of South Dakota. South Dakota, Eric Mostard. i got to think he's a future Hall of Famer as well down the line here. Mike Fellers, Stu Stevens, says... 
I'm glad the defense stepped up. We pulled that one out. Cousins is playing with a chip on his shoulder. That's the way he needs to play. I'm hoping Adam Thielen is not out for very long, though. <clears throat> I mean, although B.C. Johnson did an okay job, and yes, he did. Yes, he did. Leland Albertson. Give me one second. <clears throat> Leland Albertson out of Iowa. Says another well-balanced game. Keep the wind train a-rolling. Defense was a little slack for the most part, but had some big plays. Yeah, that about sums up the defense in a lot of ways. A little slack, but for the moment, but, but had some big plays. Dave Vicky says, what a game. Move to 5-2. and two. We just need to keep on rolling. I like it when the def when the offense is rolling. Hopefully Thielen is okay, but we'll ride with Diggs and BC. Just keep the Cousins train rolling. And yeah, man. Yeah. Justin Mir Henry says, let's hope Cousins can keep this fire burning. He has been on a roll. Gerald Spring, Nebraska, who's definitely going to get a star today, says, oh, I have to admit, I wasn't in favor of the Cousins deal last year but have to give credit where credit is due. He gets labeled for not being able to beat teams with winning records. I don't necessarily agree with that take. Even going back to last season, to me, is more of an issue of he struggles when playing teams with a very strong defensive line. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, he says, that's where the fumbles and bad throws come from, i.e. the Buffalo Bills, the Patriots, the Bears twice, the, the Bears twice last season, where games like that really stuck out. The only other teams that beat us were the Saints, Seahawks, and Rams. This year, the Bears' only game, I thought he didn't, uh, he thought that the Bears, only game I thought he didn't play that well, and the one dumb pass in Green Bay. I believe he is a top 10 quarterback when playing teams not having a top 10 defense. Shouldn't have a lot of trouble Thursday against the Redskins. We'll be very interested to see how he does against the Chiefs and Cowboys on the road. I wrote those off as guaranteed losses a few weeks ago, and, and I did too. I believe now our winnable game is very tough, but winnable. Can't wait. And yeah, I mean, you, you split those two. Okay, there, there you go. And maybe you don't even have to split them. Maybe you just win them both. Wouldn't that be freaking something? Then then it is going to be like one of those magical seasons, if that's the case. If you just keep winning like crazy, then here comes uh, it's another Kirk Cousins or uh, Case Keenum type of year with uh, a guy with a better arm. And maybe much better. We'll see. That'd be a much better result at the end of the day. I won't get my hopes too high yet, but great, great thoughts there. Very cool. And, you know, it's interesting take. Going up against a top 10 defense, especially defensive line, yeah, it's going to mess up any quarterback. I mean, what were the New York Giants known for when they won the Super Bowl? The defensive line. And Tom Brady had some of his worst games, or at least ineffective games against the New York Giants, particularly 2007. Uh, 2011... I thought his teammates let him down that year. I mean, Gronk was just dropping everything. and that Both of them had two different things on their mind. Gronk had his next party on his mind. And Hernandez was thinking about a couple of things he did. Multi yeah, that, that. And now he's no longer with us on this planet anymore. Yeah, yeah. He was thinking about that other thing. He was dropping, like, wide open passes was uh, that guy. But we'll leave that alone. The other tight end. Yeah. <clears throat> So, Red McCarthy says, nice fourth quarter. Rhodes is becoming a liability. He got burned a lot today. Yep. But uh, Mark Carlson says, spreading the ball out helps. School, CJ Ham. Yep, from Duluth there. Brett McCarthy, Mark Carlson, obviously Iowa. Brett McCarthy says, nice road win. L Leander Schieffer. Schieffer. Le Leander Schieffer. Interesting. Awesome game. Now, String should buy tickets for everyone on, on this thread. Must be related or friends or something there. South Dakota. Okay, so Leander Seifer is from South Dakota. I think Gerald String is originally from South Dakota too, I think. And he lives in Nebraska now. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, please correct me, Gerald. Interesting. So that, that's funny how he's like, hey, you know, <laughs> pass, out some, uh, pass out some tickets for everyone. That was cool. Well, let's pass out the stars and call it a day here. It's going to be slightly shorter than last week, but that's okay. I mean, last week was a historic episode, 300 episodes, So, and I'm kind of run down today. It's been a hectic, crappy day, other than the Vikings' win. The Vikings' win was a huge uplift. It kept, kept me alive. <laughs> Basically, today was a nasty kind of day. I mean, it could have been so much better, but at least whatever got done needed to get done. Speaking of a nasty day, Philadelphia is about to be 3-4. and four. Oof, they got plenty of time on the clock, but they are sucking... I, I don't like the Cowboys. You know, I've always liked the Eagles more than the Cowboys. Just that one game, you know, that one game, you know, is what pisses me off about the Eagles and their stupid fan base as well. 
But, I don't know, they've always been jackasses there, the, the fan base anyway. So, gold star today, Gerald String. Bronze star, or excuse me, silver star. Gosh, it's kind of all over the place. Oh, boy. Mike Feller, Stu Evans, and Shelby Lynn should share the silver. Bronze star is going to go to... Gosh, to the bronze star is going to go to... All the, the, you know, gosh, you know, everybody that mentioned the 300 episode should at least get a, you know, thank you so much. At least get a bronze star like uh, Dave Hickey, Tanae Brown. Gosh, I mean, Tanae Brown, what a night, you know, what an awesome guy. Vince Germano and Brent Jacobson. You know, otherwise, the other ones that did, they got the, they got the gold and silver during the course of the day. I believe Mark Carlson did as well. I mean, thank you guys so much. Yeah, he, he did it last week. Thank you guys so much for just being so awesome to me for so long and can't thank you enough and, it's an absolute honor to be here. Sorry if I seem a little weird and disoriented today. I'm doing the best I can. I feel odd right now. Kind of run down and going through some hectic crap. But, uh, well, this too shall pass. It's nothing bad. Don't worry. It's nothing too crazy. Just just a busy, busy, obnoxious day. But a wonderful Viking game. And, uh, yeah, very wonderful Viking game. And very much uh, uplifting and gives you something to look forward to during the course of this autumn. And hopefully well into the winter would be pretty damn cool if that was the case with meaningful games into January and beyond God God, God willing um, and it doesn't help the people upstairs are loud as bleep and obnoxious and they never stop thumping around Ugh, like they take a sledgehammer to their front door one of these days okay I shouldn't even joke about that but I'm not going to do that don't worry but just it's the thought that counts right <laughs> some people you just oh my god Ooh. Some people. Mm. Okay. There I go, ironing out my dirty laundry again. Airing out my dirty laundry. So, with that said, we'll pass out the contact details and get out of here. Get yeah, get your... The phone line's 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling into Purple Mafia. Do your statement, shout-out, comment, question, and opine. Please note that it is a real voicemail, so... It ends after three minutes. It'll cut you off. The other route where you don't have to worry about that is the audio submission route. Simply click on that pretty little button that says voice recorder or record, whatever, on your smart device, smartphone, whatever. Just click record, treat it like a phone call, hit stop, save it, and send it to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. Otherwise, maybe you have a laptop or desktop with Audacity and a decent microphone. Go ahead and go do it that route and email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com. If it's not an MP3 file, no problem. I can convert it with zamzar.com or converto.com. I appreciate those websites for providing that free service because the uh, files are small enough in that case, usually, that there's no fee. Otherwise, if you need to convert bigger files and regularly and everything, there's like a monthly fee in that. Maybe like if you're a podcaster, who, who knows? That's just how it goes. And you don't have like a device that does MP3 files automatically. Who, who knows what the reasoning would be. My God, these people. Oof, it's like making me deaf, it's so loud. Ugh, save me. Save me from this place. <laughs> I love this apartment. I don't like, I don't know. Uh, don't like the people above me right now. Not at this moment, anyway. God bless them. <laughs> God bless them, right? Ugh, with that said, that should be the contact details for the phone line. Anybody out there that wants to... Uh, Help out this show would be greatly appreciated. Write a positive rating on iTunes slash Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, or Stitcher would be greatly appreciated. Nice five star rating. Tell us what you like about the show. Maybe what you don't like. It looked like another rating was added, but the uh, the the total number is higher. But it doesn't show up usually for a little while for some reason. I'll give it a quick whirl here to see if it shows. But I don't think it has yet. But if you're able to do that. I greatly appreciate it. It only helps the show and makes it more attractive to new potential listeners as well. Uh, and it's not letting me do anything. Oh, story of this day today. It's just one thing after another. Tech Technology is just a headache. It really is. You get new stuff and you try to get it going and it doesn't get going and it just doesn't. And then this isn't new and I don't know. It's just annoying. Whatever it is, it is what it is. And I thank you very much in advance for anybody that would be willing to write a positive rating. About Purple Mafia on there would be greatly appreciated. Give it one more whirl here, see if it popped up. And it has not popped up yet. They have Loadmaster, still the most recent one, and I thank you so much, Loadmaster. But the number changed from 40 to 41, so obviously 
somebody wrote something. Hope it wasn't negative. Or maybe they just put a star rating. One way or another, we'll just call it a night here. Thanks again, guys and guys and gals. Beautiful weather the last couple of days. Feels like rain's coming back again, though. Ugh, there might be another reason why I feel a little weird right now. Rain sucks, <laughs> at least in my point of view. Some of you love it, most of us don't. With that said, have a safe, dry, healthy week, and go Vikings. Let's uh, roll past those Washington Redskins. The show will not be released on Thursday night, obviously. It's going to be too late. And it will not be released on Friday or Saturday, most likely. <clears throat> but it will be released by Sunday for sure. Just giving you a heads up on that. Until then, though, Skull Vikings 6-2. and two. Here we come and beyond.